What's going on guys? The day a bunch of us have been waiting for is finally here. Today the Ottawa Senators traded Eric Carlson to the San Jose Sharks. Um, honestly, when I heard the news, I was a little bit shocked. I didn't expect it to come like right now. I thought at this point they probably wouldn't trade him to like the deadline. And then it turns out he's going to San Jose, who already has Brent Burns. So you're the two best offensive defensemen in the league now, and Carlson and Burns on your team. I was thinking they probably had to give up like Thomas Hurdle, uh, Timu Meyer, uh, somebody like that, along with a bunch of good prospects and picks. Turns out, not the case. Uh, some average prospects, some draft picks, and some average roster players is all it took the Sharks to get Eric Carlson. Honestly, I couldn't believe it. I also remember back in free agency, a bunch of San Jose fans complained about not getting Tavares, so uh, you guys can no longer complain. You just got the best defenseman in the league. I would say the best right-handed defenseman to ever play in the NHL. So it's just crazy. Uh, Twitter, too, was just going nuts. So I'm going to go and try this trade now in NHL. Um, obviously, I'm pretty sure it's not going to go through, but I'm going to try some things to get it as close as possible. Uh, so starting off here with the Senators, you can see top players there. Carlson, Stone, and Duchesne. They already lost Carlson, the best of the three, and then Stone and Duchesne are also on expiring deals just like Carlson, so there's a chance the Senators could lose their three best players all in the same season, which would just be ridiculous, honestly, at this point. I'm also not sure if Carlson's going to re-sign in San Jose. Uh, he didn't sign an extension immediately like Patch Reddy did, so I feel like chances are he goes to UFA. Like, he just got traded to San Jose, even if they win a cup. Why not go to UFA and see just how much money you can get in the offseason and also just choose your destination. Another kind of interesting thing here, uh, Vancouver, Ottawa, and Carolina are all tied as the worst teams in this game at 88 overall. So um, after the Senators lose Carlson, I feel like they'll probably be down to 87, which of course would make them like the single uh, worst team in the game. So uh, for the trade from Ottawa's side, I'm going to put the difficulty on hard just to make it as hard as possible to go through, but I feel like there's no way San Jose doesn't say yes to this. And then when we actually do it on the other side, um, when we do the trade from San Jose's perspective, I'm going to have the trade difficulty on easy, and I feel like Ottawa's still going to like laugh in our face and say no, but let's find out. Also guys, before we get to the trade, totally forgot to break it down in case you haven't heard um, what it is yet. So of course the Sharks get Eric Carlson from the Senators along with uh, Francis Perron, who I think is just there for the roster spot. Uh, then the Senators get Josh Norris, uh, 2017 first round pick by the Sharks. He actually plays for Michigan. Pretty good player, but again, nothing amazing. Uh, Chris Tierney, he's like a solid third line center. Uh, Rudolph Balsers is like a good AHL player. Uh, Dylan DeMello is like a bottom pair D for the Sharks. Maybe he'll end up being like a number four guy in the future. Uh, conditional 2020 first round pick. Basically, if the Sharks miss the playoffs, it's 2019. If they make the playoffs, it's 2020. So it'll be a 2020 first round pick. Uh, 2019 second. Uh, it'll be either theirs or the Panthers. The Sens get whichever pick is higher, so most likely it'll be the Panthers second round pick. And then they also get two conditional draft picks on top of that, but I feel like neither of them they'll end up getting. Uh, the first is a second in 2021 if Carlson does sign an extension with San Jose, but like I was saying, I feel like he'll almost for sure go to UFA at this point, um, get paid a lot more money, and choose whichever team he wants to play for. Uh, the second is kind of funny. Uh, they get a first round pick no later than 2022, if the Sharks trade Carlson to an Eastern Conference team this season. So I read that. I thought it was hilarious. Obviously, that's to make sure they don't do with Carlson what they did with Hoffman in the summer. Um, that's another thing, too. Like, when I saw the trade news, I saw he was going to San Jose. I thought it would have to be an amazing return because, like, San Jose completely screwed Ottawa, taking Hoffman, then flipping him to the Panthers for what I felt was a better return, um, a team in their division. So I thought, like, after a team screws you like that, you just stop making trades with them. So if you're going to make a trade with them, with the best player to ever play for your franchise. Like, you've got to have a good return. So that's why I was surprised kind of with how little they got. Again, just I think everyone's sort of shocked. The fact they traded him to San Jose, the return they got, everything like that. Would love to hear what you guys think about it um, in the comments section. Honestly, I still, I still like trying to wrap my head exactly around the trade. So um, the two roster players, you can see Tierney's the first one. He's actually on like the first page of players, but just barely. Uh, he's 24 years old, 81 overall center. He's got the medium top six four potential role, though. Like I said, he's a third line center. Right there, you can see the other stats. Uh, second round pick back in 2012. He's making 2.9 million uh, for the next two years, so he's not too expensive. And the other roster player they got with him was Dylan DeMello, uh, 25 year old, 78 overall defenseman, medium top six potential, making 900k there for two more years. Like I was saying, he's a bottom pair guy. Best case scenario, he turns into like a number four for you. Uh, sixth round pick back in 2011. Um, again, like I was saying, they also got Balsers here. You can see, he might have led like the uh, Sharks AHL team in scoring. He's still like pretty average prospect. 21 years old here, 72 overall, low top 9. 
he's actually on their block here, which is kind of funny. Uh, let's see here. Drafted fifth round back in 2015. So a fifth round pick, I would say he's probably doing better than a fifth round pick, like your average fifth rounder, um, but still nothing amazing. Um, on top of that, like I was saying, they got Josh Norris, who won't be in this game as he's a college prospect, but he was a first round pick. So um, in that case, I guess we'll use the 2021 first round pick to kind of represent Norris, who, I mean, I would say is worthy of that value there. He's probably like medium top six, I don't know. And then of course they have the 2020 first round pick and a 2019 second round pick. So uh, because you can only put five things on here, we'll actually take out Balsers as he has the lowest value of the other two players. I'm going to replace that with the 2019 second rounder. Like I said, most likely Florida's will be higher, so it does have more value than San Jose's. So that's kind of all we can add there. Um, the other things are Balsers, who has like no value, who we just took off. And then the two conditional picks, which like I said, I highly doubt they get. Eric Carlson there, you can see, he's a beast. 20 years old, uh, 90 overall, elite potential there. I'm pretty sure it was franchise in NHL 18, so it looks like it went down just because he had one sort of mediocre year. Roll there, obviously, top two defenseman. He's the best defenseman in the game, in the world. He was picked 15th overall back in 2008. Um, I actually do want to show you guys his stats, as, like I was saying, aside from last year, which wasn't even that bad a year, 62 points, 71 there. Uh, he's got 82. I didn't... 42 games in the AHL. That has to be wrong, right? That's... There's got to be something messed up there. Um, 82, though, and 82 back in 15, 16. 66, 74, 78. Like, his point totals for D-man are just insane. So uh, they traded Carlson and then they added that one dude, Francis Perron, like I said, had to just be there uh, for the roster spot. Hopefully he's in this game. All right, there he is. 22-64, HL potential. Um, again, doesn't really matter. So looking at the value there, it's actually a little closer than I expected, uh, probably because we are getting the two first, but uh, the value is still definitely on our side. Zane Jose is very interested in Carlson. Uh, so hard trade don't we'll see. I'm sure Zane Jose says yes to this. Uh, move down one guy sure we'll do it and as you can see there yeah the trade does go through even on hard difficulty with like the five best pieces um, obviously there too you can see Ottawa's a rebuilder San Jose's a contender with the addition of Carlson I mean they're definitely a champion now I mean look at that like I was saying before they now have the two best offensive defensemen in the league you can even put like Brent Burns on wing it's so unfair but we're now gonna try to trade as San Jose see if we can somehow get to go through and have the difficulty set down easy uh, it's still probably gonna be really tough. And one more thing guys before you try the trade from the Sharks perspective I want to show you what the center's lines are looking like um, after that trade went through. So Bodker, Duchesne, and Stone's the first line. Again, they could lose Duchesne and Stone both at the deadline because they're expiring deals so if they find out they're not re-signing you might as well get whatever you can and if teams know that they're gonna trade them no matter what the return probably won't be great. Uh, Ryan here with the Zingle and White on the second line. Uh, Payarvi, Tierney, and Smith the third. And then Gabrick, Pyatt, and Pajot's the fourth. Another thing too, I have Pajot on the fourth line right now. He probably would be playing higher, but in real life, he's actually going to be injured for like the next four to six months. So just another blow to the Sens fans. Uh, defense here, you got Shabbat and Cece on the top pair. Uh, Shabbat is like one bright spot on that Sens uh, franchise, I guess. The thing is though, I remember back watching World Juniors a couple years ago. Like he was so dominant. He was definitely like the MVP for Canada. I think he got MVP defenseman of the tournament. And I was thinking like, how good are him and Carlson going to be as Ottawa's top pair for years to come? And uh, we'll never know. I mean, it's another thing too. Like, Carlson's only 28. If the rebuild takes 3-4 years, he's 31-32. He's still going to help you. They didn't need to move on from him. Uh, Anderson there is a starter. Conan backing him up. So the goaltending is really not that great either. I feel bad. I think, you know, for sure this is going to be the worst team in the league this year. But I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens with them. So like I was saying, guys, I'm going to try this trade as the Sharks. I have the trade difficulty set to easy. Um, I pretty much never make trades on easy, so I'm not sure how easy it is. Um, I doubt it'll be easy enough to make this go through, but that would be kind of interesting as it would be like a bit closer, I guess, than I think. So Carlson there too doesn't have max trade value. I think in NHL 18 he did have max trade value, but also he had the uh, franchise potential there opposed to just elite. Um, Perron there, make it you know realistic, get all the right pieces. Um, and of course, we're going to add Tierney, who, okay, the signers want, so that helps out. Um, let's see if they actually want uh, DeMello. They do want DeMello. Okay, so maybe this thing can go through. Uh, the draft picks here. So Florida's 2019 second, so the 2020 first. And then, like I was saying, Josh Norris isn't in the game, so he was picked with a first round pick. We'll use the 2020 first round pick to kind of represent him. Um, the value. Is definitely still on the center side but surprisingly they want all five of the most valuable pieces of that trade so maybe this somehow goes through 
It is on easy. Trade rejected still. Totally unwilling to part ways. Okay, so let's say the Sharks actually re-sign Carlson. Uh, that would give the Sens a 2021 second round pick. So we'll replace DeMello there as he has the lowest value um, of the five things. So there's another draft pick here. And again, draft picks are good, but they're getting so much uncertainty back uh, for Carlson, who you know is like the best demon in the game. So we'll see now if the Sharks extend Carlson, does the trade go through. And of course, DeMello and Bolsters are also part of this trade, but we can only add five things. So let's see if this actually gets it done. Trade rejected. And again, this is on easy, guys. Um, so let's say... They don't extend Carlson, but for whatever reason, the Sharks decide to trade Carlson um, to a team in the East. They somehow get an awesome deal where giving up the first in 2022 is still worth it. In this scenario, does Ottawa say yes on easy difficulty? They still say no. So even getting all the best pieces back, um, Ottawa is just not willing to trade Eric Carlson. I kind of figured... Um, that would be the case. And right here, guys, look at the Sharks' lines after that trade. Um, obviously, their offense is still good. Kane, Kachur, Pavelski, the first line. Uh, Meyer, Thornton, LeBlanc on the second. Donskoy, Hurdle, Carlson on the third. With Goudreau, Gambrel, and Sorensen on the fourth. So really, other than this Gamble guy, I'm not familiar with him, who's a 68. The forward group is still good. I'm sure they can either find someone playing well in the AHL or just sign, you know, a veteran. Trade for somebody. It doesn't really matter because this is their defense. Edward Vlasic and Carlson, I feel, will be the top pair. Uh, Burns and Ryan was the top pair last year, now would be their second pair, and then Dylan and Braun, probably the best bottom pair in the NHL, I mean this is the best decor in the NHL, like, having Carlson or Burns, whichever one on the second pair is insane, you could put them both on the top pair, but it probably make more sense to have them split up during 5-on-5, five five, but obviously, um, on the power play, you're gonna want to have them both together, like, look at this power play, Pavelski, Thornton, Couture, Carlson, Burns, probably even Kane could be on there, like, the power play is just insane, and then obviously, of course, they still have a very good goalie in Martin Jones, and a good backup even in Dell. Um, also, Scratch, Tim Heath, so maybe they can make him, uh, like, you know, trade him for a forward or something. Like, the Sharks are going to be nasty this year. Uh, I'll give you guys a quick look, too, at what Carlson looks like in a Sharks jersey. I honestly still can't believe this trade. So look at that, guys. Best player on the San Jose Sharks is now Eric Carlson. Uh, right here, he actually has high franchise potential, so I'm not sure why it showed as elite in franchise mode. Maybe sometimes... They'll change slightly. Uh, again, you can see making six and a half million for one more year. I don't think he extends. I think he's going to free agency for sure. But there is Eric Carlson as a San Jose Shark. It definitely looks a little weird. And like I said earlier, I'd love to hear what you guys thought about this trade. I'm curious if like there's a single person out there that thinks Ottawa didn't do too bad. I don't anyone thinks Ottawa won the trade, but maybe they thought it was a fair trade. Um, I think they definitely went with a more like quantity over quality approach. And if you get lucky at the draft, maybe it works out for them. But Obviously, you have to get lucky. So, uh, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, I'll leave the thumbs up. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, please do that. Help me on the road to 100K. Thank you guys for watching. Have a nice day. Goodbye.